In this video, I expand a little bit further on a simple agent-based simulation model that I developed in a previous video. Um, in a previous video, I showed um, a simple agent-based simulation model in which a battlefield was created as a two-dimensional grid. Within that grid, two types of agents were allocated at random locations, and these agents were characterized by a certain attack reach or attack range and also a, a fixed life score of 100. Throughout simulation runs or throughout iterations agents were interacting in the battle and I demonstrate how this could be um, modeled in Python and how this could be visualized using matplotlib. Um, in this video I want to be I want to expand a little bit on that previous video by um, going through the model once more, this time cleaning the code a little bit and, and assigning the functionality to, to modules or functions. And then also I'm going to do a simple variation of some parameters and show you how you could be approaching a, a simulation study using a agent-based simulation model such as the one developed in this video. Um, and if you want to see the Python code for this, you can click on the link in the video description, um, which will take you to a blog post in which I documented all of this coding. So, again, in this model, <coughs> we have agents, which are instances of the class agent. Um, as you can see, they have a live score of 100, and they have a defined X and Y location within a, a grid. This grid is called Battlefield. Um, it is a two-dimensional array um, which I create here using a list comprehension in Python. I define a helper function that helps me create a group of agents and all this function does is it allocates a defined number of agents of a defined type within um, randomly selected cells um, throughout this battlefield grid. And I also have a plotting function that visualizes the battlefield such that I can see the actual location within the battlefield of the two groups of agents. For this I need to map the agent objects to integer values or numeric values actually not integers but floats in this case, um, such that I can visualize the cell values using matplotlib. And the function in matplotlib that is essential in this case is the imshow function. Here I have a, a function that is used for initializing the battlefield. All this function does is it cleans the battlefield um, such that every cell is empty at this point. And then it uses the helper function agent creator to create two groups of agents of type A and B. These will then be allocated within this battlefield. And as a return, I get the populated battlefield. So that's the return value. And you can see I'm executing the init battlefield function in this case. And I'm using the plot battlefield function that I find above here to um, visualize the initial population of this battlefield. Agents of type A are highlighted in green color, and agents of type B are highlighted in blue color. And now, a battle is to ensue between these two groups of agents. Um, and the basic approach is that within each iteration throughout the battle, every agent that is still alive is allowed to attack one other agent. And every agent is allowed to attack, to conduct an attack. After each iteration, all the agents that have a non positive life score will be removed from this battlefield grid. So throughout the battle, um, the 
more and more Asians are gonna disappear and um, the remaining number of Asians is gonna decrease. Agents have a defined range. With, within this range, they can attack other agents. And um, I define this range as a, as a Moore-based neighborhood. So meaning if, for example, the attack range is five, it means that, for example, this green agent can attack a blue agent within a range of five, in this case being defined as five steps into positive y direction or negative y direction and five steps into positive or negative x direction. So this square around this agent with a range of five is going to be the neighborhood and within that neighborhood the agent is allowed to attack one enemy if there is an enemy. The two groups of agents have, have a slightly different strategy Um, and uh, group A pursues a strategy of always hitting the same agent um, so the same enemy within um, the neighborhood so if for example if this green agent has an enemy within the neighborhood for example this enemy he will throughout every iteration attack that enemy over and over again until that enemy disappears and then he's gonna choose another enemy and then continue to attack that enemy for every round until that enemy disappears agents of type B they have a slightly different strategy which is that within their neighborhood they are gonna randomly select one enemy and then attack that enemy so in one round an agent of type B might be attacking a certain enemy and another round might be attacking a different enemy since there is a random selection going on. The attack damage itself is randomly distributed uh, with a uniform distribution between 10 and 60. Um, yeah, and those are basically the, 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 um, the characteristics of this battle taking place. I define here a helper function for removing dead ancients so that after each iteration, I can call this function to remove all agents with a non-positive life score from the battlefield grid. And I also define some helper functions for implementing the attack strategy of agents of type A and the attack strategy of agents of type B. So this is done here in these lines of code. And basically for agents of type A, we had this deterministic attack strategy since for every round they will attack the same agent. Um, and this is, is implemented with an, as I said, deterministic attack strategy, um, which makes sure that for each iteration, the same enemy is going to be attacked until that enemy disappears. Um, so it's simply just a defined um, sequence of steps um, for finding an enemy which is always the same sequence of step um, and in this way it's in made sure that the same enemy is going to be attacked throughout every run. In these lines of code I, I conduct one simulation run with 50 iterations of battle and I visualize the battlefield population after that run. In this case the attack range is defined as 10 so each agent can attack enemies within a range of 10 cells. I go a little bit further now and I define um, two helper functions that calculate the number of agents that are still alive at a given iteration. Um, I also define a plotting function here that plots the number of agents that are alive at a given point in time. And I define an, a function that implements a simulation run. And I have some arguments I can define here. I can say how many iterations my simulation should be running over. I can set the attack range of the agents. And I can set a Boolean variable to either true or false, depending on whether I want a time series plot to be, um, show, uh, to be displayed or not. 
um, the simulation run will res uh, will return um, the number of agents being alive at the end of the simulation of respectively type A and B. Um, so here you can see uh, an example where I use the init battlefield function that initializes the battlefield and afterwards I use the simulation run function to conduct one simulation run in this case setting the attack range to 10 and the number of iterations to 50 um, and the uh, show plot argument is set to true resulting in a uh, visualization of the battle progression so you can see the number of agents that are alive type A and B throughout the iterations so in this case it seems like agents of type B are more successful in this um, battle um, and they have the attack strategy of attacking a random uh, randomly selected enemy within their neighborhood now in this, in this case we had 1000 agents of type A and 1000 agents of type B to start with I conduct another simulation run with slightly less agents of type B and I look at the result in this case it still seems like agents of type B are more successful even though their number at the beginning is, is lower um, and now I look at what happens if I set the number of agents to be the same at the beginning but the attack range is reduced to 5 in this case it seems like um, both groups of agents are equally successful so in this case there seems to be no difference between the attack strategies in terms of success now there's some randomization going on in this simulation since the location of the agents is random and also the attack damage um, is uniformly distributed between a, a lower and upper limit so I want to conduct a sensitivity test for this at the final function 2 takes as arguments the number of iterations um, the attack range and the number of simulation runs to be conducted within that sensitivity test now the sensitivity is simply the the outcome of the of the simulation independence of this random selection um, so what I'm doing here is I'm in this case conducting simulation runs where the number of agents of type B is slightly lower than the number of agents of type A this is just an example you can implement it a different way you could say you set the number of agents to be equal and um, what will be returned is the the number of agents alive at the end of the simulation of type A and type B and the idea is to take that return value and feed it to a histogram function since this will be a list um, so the, the return value of the sensitivities function is a a list that contains two sublists the first sublist is going to contain the number of agents alive at the end of every simulation run of type A and the other subplot is going to contain the number of agents of type B that are still alive at the end of simulation so if I for example conduct 10 simulation runs within the sensitivity test then both of these subplots are going to have a length of 10 and those values I can feed to a histogram plotting function which is going to show me the distribution of final battle outcome in this case it is for 50 simulation runs an attack range of 5 and each simulation run has 50 iterations and as defined in the sensitivity test function itself here the battlefield is populated in a way that we have slightly less agents of type B and slightly more agents of type um, A and um, well the result is the histogram here in this case um, agents of type A will be on average more successful than agents of type B probably due to the fact that there are 
simply more agents of type A to begin with. And the attack range does not seem to have a great effect when the or the the attack strategy does not seem to have a strong effect when the um, battle range or the attack range is uh, as low as five. So this is just a simple example how you can build up a, a agent-based framework for conducting simulation studies in Python. Um, and you can also find some modules that um, the, that provide a pre-developed framework for conducting agent-based simulation studies, uh, which I will be looking at in future videos. But here I wanted to give you a a very basic introduction to how you can build your own agent-based framework for conducting simulation studies.